You know someone is serious about spirits when you hear this. Yeah, I just got back from New Orleans. I was attending a symposium on rum. Now, the most Aaron and I have ever managed was maybe a short refresher course on rum sitting at a bar. So we're both very curious to hear just what kind of things you pick up at a two-day rum workshop. So here to tell us about her trip to the Big Easy and impart some of that spiritual knowledge, and oh, let's not forget mix up a rum cocktail, is our friend, mixologist Shannon Mustafer. Welcome back to BK Live. It's been too long, but I'm really happy to be back, especially on the heels of that trip. It was super fun, and I love to share what I discovered there. And Please. Yeah, we're going yeah. to have to ask is, what was the name of the conference? It was called Rum, Rum, Rum. And basically, the idea was to explore the history of the spirit in that city, how that in turn impacted the cocktail and drinking culture there, and how that spread out across America to define how we interact with each other over drinks. And how we interact with rum. Well, I mean, that <laughs> goes without saying. <laughs> okay, so tell us about uh, your trip down to New Orleans. It was really cool. I got a chance to visit very iconic bars to try drinks that, you know, a lot of us consider to be the first cocktails in America. I uh, went down for five days, but the symposium was actually two, so I got some extra time to visit some watering holes, take in the French Quarter, tried tons of rum, like, all over the place, went to the Black Duck Bar, went to French 75, got to visit Mr. Chris Hanna there, went to Latitude 29. Went to French 75? Went to French 75. Uh, no. Like, all the iconic drinking spots, uh, it was kind of incredible. I, I, I want to go back. So like, how did rum become so popular in America? So when America first got it uh, established, it was really difficult for Europeans to import wine or port or brandy, which were basically a preferred beverage of those settlers in the upper classes. Uh, it was expensive, first of all. It was really difficult for it to, you know, withstand the journey across the Atlantic. And, you know, sugar was the principal cash crop that was cultivated in America, and so it was a very ready source to make alcoholic beverages out of. So it was basically like, we have a lot of this leftover byproduct. We have a lot of thirsty people. So it's like a perfect marriage of, you know, circumstances and need and, over time, innovation. And triangular trade. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, as a mixologist, are there endless kind of cocktails you can make using rum? Yeah, I mean, I started the beverage program at Gladys Caribbean a little over two years ago, and in the process of setting up their program, discovered that rum of all the categories, you know, as the name of that symposium would suggest, is very diverse. There are three main cultural approaches, and they all have different flavor profiles depending on the, you know, place where it's coming from and how they produce and what they like to drink and how they like to drink. So, yeah, I mean, I found out that if God came to me and was like, you can only have one spirit to mix with going forward, without reservation, I would say rum, you know? Oh, wow. Anything from punches to sours to hot toddies, flips, whatever you want to do, you can bend it in so many directions. You hear that, God? Rum. We're going with rum. I like that. Okay, so what are you going to uh, make for us today and uh, tell us a little bit about the history of the cocktail? Yeah, sure. We're just going to start with the very quintessential and basic New Orleans cocktails that, again, basically started a cocktail movement in America. We're going to do a rum Sazerac and a rum Old Fashioned. I have to admit, I was really impressed that when I was there, I saw so many of these drinks going out, no matter if I was in a high-end cocktail bar, a neighborhood bar, a dive bar. It's ubiquitous. It's basically kind of like their version of sweet tea, if you will. It's like no one's really thinking about it too hard. It's like, I want to drink. It's probably going to be a beer or an old-fashioned. So I, I thought that was really cool. What goes into an old-fashioned? Old-fashioned, super simple. Um, Pay attention now. <laughs> got some sugar, you got bitters. In this case, I'm using the Bitterman's Tiki Bitters because it is a little bit of a cross between orange and aromatic bitter, which is what you would traditionally utilize. And then there's going to be a little bit of citrus just to give it a aroma in the end, and of course you have your spirit. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, this is basically a great drink to start off with if you're learning to mix at home, and if you are a little, I don't know, kind of like intimidated by a technique, I'm definitely intimidated uh, mixing drinks at home. I have so Ditto. many friends of our bartenders. I, I feel like, eh, I just have a beer for you. But if I knew how to make a nice, simple, delicious, refreshing cocktail, I most certainly would. Well, the truth about mixing mold cocktails is that it is pretty simple. You know, at the end of the day, 
they basically come down to three ingredients and then maybe you extrapolate a little bit or extend on that a little bit but it's all about paying attention using good ingredients and then you're basically all set so what I did here is I took the uh, the sugar and put some bitters on top and now I'm going to add just a little bit of water to make it a little looser and easier to manipulate I'm going to I'm going to show you this so you can see it a little easier. Use a muddler. I'm going to add a little bit more in terms of bitter here. I'm already intimidated. I don't have a muddler at home. Never muddled in my life. Well, you know what? There's a first time for everything, and I trust that you will do just fine. <laughs> Thank you, Shannon. Oh, no problem. <laughs> so you're going to head and muddle. Some people have uh, varying opinions around old-fashioned. In Wisconsin, for instance, you'll see cherries and oranges put exactly, in there. Yeah. Uh, I'm going with a more classic, kind of drier, stripped down, unadorned version. Okay, so to that, I'm gonna to top up with two ounces of spirit. Now tell us a little bit about uh, Denizen as you are an ambassador. Yeah, Denizen is a blend of rum sourced from the Caribbean, aged and blended in Amsterdam by one of the oldest firms in the business. EA Scare got their start as a subsidiary of the East India Company mm -hmm. and uh, they have the best kind of global knowledge of rum in the world. As they became importers for the sailors, associate with that company, and are able to source reliably from small distilleries that normally wouldn't see the light of day here in this market because they're old school, they're small production. But we work with them because their expression is very traditional and to us, uh, it will show you the real flavor of rum, not like a mass-produced kind of like, I don't want to name names, but... Uh, well, no reason to name names, no, but what but you're saying is there's a, a flavor profile of rum for, for everybody. Oh, absolutely. This is a blend of Jamaica and Martinique rum, and the whole idea, she can make classic cocktails, you can make sippers, you can have it by itself in the rocks. It's awesome for punches because it's very nuanced and has a ton of flavor. Amazing. All right, now I think we have about three more minutes, so if we're gonna get the other cocktail in, let's oh, do yeah. that. We don't that wanna miss a cocktail. Well, you gotta get the Sazerac, because this is something I saw a lot of, and it was actually my first cocktail when I got to New Orleans, because Cheers. I knew Cheers. I didn't have to think about whether I was gonna do that. So let me walk you through it real fast. You're gonna put either absinthe this or some delicious. sort of, oh, Unbelievable. for you. Yes, thank you, Shannon. I'm just saying, you wouldn't going, think that a spirit-driven drink like that would be refreshing in the summer, and I was surprised that people were really taking to it in New Orleans. Oh, it's unbelievable. Think of the French influence. You're going to rinse out with some absinthe in the glass. In this case, I'm using pastis because it's a little more budget-friendly. Mm -hmm. Unless you know that you're really into absinthe, I don't recommend going to buy a bottle. <laughs> Peychaud Bitter is the bitter of New Orleans. It comes from an apothecary and you know, these were originally meant to just kind of settle your stomach. So the uh, apothecary, the Sazerac bar that started this has the same formula dating back over 150 years. So I'm going to mix you guys too. So go ahead and put four ounces in and then I'm just going to add ice and stir. I'm going to put it in your glass and you'll be ready to go. Amazing. Oh wow. Denizen rum. It's tasty, I'll tell you that much, just judging by these cocktails that we have in our hands right now. I mean, again, like the rum of late kind of doesn't have all the flavor in it that it originally did, and we talked a lot about that at the symposium and tried a bunch of different styles. Mm -hmm. It's made from sugar cane, and if you treat it with respect, the flavors of where it comes from will come through. I love it, Denizen Rum. Tell us your Instagram real quick, because we only have a minute left, yeah, so sure. that people know where to find you. Shane. And I'm sure you'll be having events throughout the summer as we can all follow you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my Instagram is Shannon Mustafer. that's it. I'm not that uh, creative, at least when it comes to that part. <laughs> and then, yeah, regarding the rest of this month, I will be taking these drinks to a few bars in Brooklyn, so follow me on Instagram, and just stay abreast of where we're gonna be pouring some New Orleans-style drinks next. Yes, because these are Delicious, Shannon. Unbelievable. Well, you know, the history of New Orleans and cocktails, you know, you always come to New York and you think brunch and brunch cocktails, but many of these drinks that are so familiar to us actually originate from right down in New Orleans. So. Well, as they say, if it's not broke, you don't fix it. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Shannon, Sounds thank good. you very it's much. Been too long. Here's We're so to glad to have you back. Really good to have you. Absolutely. Okay, Dennis and Rum, again. thank you. And to you, Shannon, Thanks. to the weekend, right? Cheers, Aaron. To the weekend. Oh, geez. Okay. Mm. Oh my gosh. Tasty. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable, Shannon. Thank you very much. You're telling us to read. I just want to drink and talk to you more. We'll do it when the.
cameras go off.